What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jay, 2J's Kicks, and we are back with another installment of Q&A with Jay. And this is the top questions asked on YouTube for the month of April 2017. I know that it's May, but again, these are the questions that were most asked last month. So, Joni, let's have at it. All right, the first question is, how did you and wifey meet? And was she always into sneakers or did you get her into it? Uh, Joni and I met in a very unique way, so to speak. She found me and she hit me up kind of thing. Um, and uh, we hit it off right off the bat. Like her personality's uh, kind of in line with mine we enjoy to we both enjoy giving people a hard time from time to time and uh we push each other to be better um as far as the sneaker side of it no she wasn't in a sneakers at all when i met her she had a pair of runners that she used to go to the gym and a whole bunch of heels and back then i was in a sneakers but really wasn't in a position to be able to buy or chase some of the sought after stuff. So I didn't really have that many sneakers either when I met her. I think I only had like two, three pairs. Are you happy that I'm not wearing heels as much since I am taller than you barefoot? I'm happy that we are both able to chase something we have a, a an interest in. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I don't mind you wearing a good pair of heels here and there. The height thing has never bothered me. <laughs> me either. Would you ever consider opening a shop on the East Coast? Uh, I think about it damn near every day. That's originally where I'm from, right? Everybody knows I'm from Jersey. Um, and you know, when you open a business and it winds up getting the support that it has as early on as what we're doing, um, I dream about it a lot. And I think that you know, it's only a matter of time before you start seeing stores everywhere. You and what do you think, Joni? Think we should open on the East Coast? You, I, I would love that. So we just Me gotta too. do it right. Yep, 100%. Yeah. What is the best way to find out if a pair of kicks are authentic? Great question. Um, you know, if you're in, if, if you're doing a trade or you're buying a shoe from someone that's local or in your city, I would strongly suggest going into your local consignment shop and having them authenticate them for you if you're not the most knowledgeable or haven't seen uh, the shoe that you're trying to acquire at all before acquiring it, right? And uh, if you don't have a sneaker shop or don't have the time to get down to a shop, I would suggest, you know, Going on Instagram, there's a lot of accounts uh, on Instagram that uh, specialize on, in authenticating. And, you know, just ask. Ask people in your local sneaker groups, you know, sneaker shops. There's tons of people that'll be more than happy to help you in authenticating stuff. What made you think of the name Urban Necessities? Well, the UN, Urban Necessities, is a play on the United Nations, right? If you look at people that uh, come into the store or that work at the store, you have people from all walks of life. And like the United Nations, it's for one common goal, and it's a multitude of people working together for that common goal. Um, and then the words urban necessities are also a play on what the urban culture's necessities are. If you look at the urban culture, it's music, it's tattoos, it's barbers, it's clothing, it's fashion, it's sneakers. And, you know, we've tried to dabble a little bit in all of that. That's why you, you've, you see that on social media, we, we post a random amount of stuff, but it's very eclectic and it, it makes sense. What's your favorite beverage? Uh, Monster and Coca-Cola for the tie. What is your favorite Ultra Boost collab? That's, that's tough. 
Ultra Boost collab, I mean, Asanasis, Woodwoods, the color collab. I like the color, the first color collab a lot. That's like one of my favorite pairs. You like that more than the SNS? Yeah. I, because I, I wear the color more than the s and I can't do white shoes as much, right? They get dirty and I get it. I, I could buy another pair or clean them and stuff, but that's not my steez. You know what I mean? Like I, I like shoes that I could wear a lot without noticing that they're dirty. I wear mine a lot. Mine still fly. Yeah, but you're a different type of breed, I guess. <laughs> Can I put my dad's sketchers on consignment? Was this really the top asked question? How many <laughs> times was this question asked to be in the Q&A with Jay? Uh, no, you can't. I, I mean, we try to sell everybody's shoes, but at the same time, we have to continue to carry shoes that are that makes sense for the brand and we're not known for sketchers no offense well, sketchers aren't really highly sought after or hard to find so that's pretty much why right good point now what was the one shoe that you sold that started out your whole shoe selling game area 72 barkley posit i mean i've i've been on tons of videos early on into the brand where i talked about uh what got me into the, into the shoe game. But for those that are new to what I'm doing, um, the Area 72 Barkley Posit was a shoe that I saw in November of the year prior to it coming out. And at that time, I had lost my job and was I uh, pretty much lost everything. I'd only known Joni for maybe two, three months. And I told Joni I was in a sneakers. And sneaker was coming out. Joni went to Hawaii in December. She asked me if I wanted to go. I was kind of ashamed because I didn't want to meet her family under my broke boy conditions at the time. And instead what I did was when she was gone, I started going to all the sneaker stores in my city at that time and saying, remember the name, remember the face, day's gonna come, I'm gonna buy every shoe that comes out. And you know, even though we didn't have the funds and I didn't have the means to get around or you know, I didn't have the most knowledge of sneakers at that time. I really, I really believed that. Shoe comes out in February, All-Star Weekend. You remember that weekend? Mm -hmm. We started standing in line at like 3 in the morning the night before the shoe came out. And the plan initially was to buy three pairs. And we bought like 18 and... I think it was 19. Yeah, 19. 18 or 19 pairs. And we sold all of them in like six hours except for the one that I wanted to keep. Because the initial plan was buy three, sell two, keep one, you know. Like everybody that starts, you start with, oh, I'm going to buy a couple of these to flip so I could get mine for free. And it just took a life of its own from the very beginning, huh? Mm -hmm. I hated that shoe when we first when I, I love that shoe. It. I still love that shoe. No, I love shoe. it now. I, I thought it looked like a ketchup squirt on the side, but it's cool. What made you want to open up a shoe store? Um, it was a couple things, right? When we were selling sneakers, I think really early on, it couldn't have been more than five, six months into me reselling shoes under two J's. You know, we were a little bit more active on social media. No, I didn't have a huge following then, maybe like a thousand followers on Instagram. But we were very active in some local sneaker groups and everybody in the and like the people that were very vocal in the group all expressed interest in having a place where they could buy sell and trade and that you know vegas didn't really have an outlet for the culture and i agreed with that i got tired of seeing people get flaked on people getting robbed for shoes and you know, fakes and all that other stuff. And as 2Js grew, you know, I believe more and more that I could be the guy that could round up people and get everybody to work together as a cohesive unit in my community. And, you know, I, I honestly felt, you know, UN was gonna be really big and that it would be bigger than some of the movements that are going on. But when I said that, 
you never really process, I never really process or anticipated seeing the support that we see, not only from Vegas, but globally. Like it's insane how many uh, of our guests are from out of state or out of the country. And you ask them and you ask them how they heard about your shop and they say through YouTube or through the Kaisers of the world or the Teddies or CJ or Instagram. It's just mind blowing how social media has really helped us grow in in a way that I can't even begin to explain. Like it's definitely changed our lives, you know, and, and um, because of the influence that social media has really created or or how it's impacted our business is probably one of the biggest reasons why i opened the youtube channel you know all these people are coming in and they're like there's they're kind of regurgitating your message but they're doing it in their own way and not that they're doing it in a wrong way but you want to you want to kind of have control over what content is being put out for your brand so that's why we we got back on on youtube and are doing videos or trying to do as many videos as as we are what's your favorite tattoo piece that not i gotta ask a question to be able to give an answer like is this like my favorite tattoo piece that i've seen or like my favorite tattoo piece that i have i don't know i mean that's just a question here so i guess maybe you could answer both ways all right so the best the, the my favorite tattoo I've ever seen has to be work from either uh, Carlos Torres or Nico Hurtado, which if you if you go on their Instagrams and see their work, they're like, I'm very big into like photorealism, black and gray tattoos, some color. And these guys just like are, they're like Picasso and Jordan mixed in a one, but with like a tattoo gun. It's insane. Um, as far as my pieces, you know, uh, I, I can't just single one out. Um, yes, I'm removing stuff on my left arm to start over. Uh, not because I regret the tattoos that I have, but because the quality of work of the stuff that I've been able to get now, my older stuff really isn't in line. And, and I, I am addicted to tattoos and into tattoos probably more than I am sneakers. And, and you know that from before, yeah. you know, since, but I would have to say that it's gotta be my leg sleeves. Um, you know, my right leg, uh, and I probably won't show them in this video cause I do want to do like a tattoo collection video here at some point. I just don't think I'm camera ready, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, and I know that sounds weird, but like, what gets you camera ready? I have to like manscape a little <laughs> bit. Um, when you get tattooed as much as I do, the artist has to shave that part. And you know, obviously these are pieces that took more than one session. You start growing hair like crazy. Um, but uh, my leg pieces, like my right leg is people that played a positive role in history. And you guys have seen some like, um, a lot of people confuse Alexander Graham Bell with, my, with the Dos Equis guy but it's Alexander Graham Bell, right? I have, you know, Graham Bell, Tesla, Einstein, Darwin, Mother Teresa, MLK on one leg. And they're people that played a positive role in history and all were considered wax at one point. And, you know, I, I relate to that a lot because I'm really focused on playing a positive role in my current, you know, existence and generation and uh i've always been considered a whack and you know i know that the way i go about stuff is a little different and i could totally relate to them uh, i'm not saying that what i'm doing is as epic as them but they were very inspiring to me and then my left leg is i'm a hardcore new york giants fan you know it i can't be bothered when I watch Giants football like I if there's a game on and I can't get the game on at the shop I wind up leaving like the outside world content like this continues to exist to me for those few hours and I'm doing like a tribute piece to the New York Giants on my left leg I have three of the four Super Bowl rings um, Tom Coughlin, Strahan, Eli, um, Victor Cruz, the catch 
And, you know, I, I get it. They might not be the greatest players in the history of New York Giants football, but to me, the players and coaches and rings that I have are the most vital parts of those particular items that I have in New York Giants, like history, are kind of on my leg, and that's really dope, too. Wanna know what my favorite tattoo of yours is? What's that? It's the it's your finger tattoos. Yeah, these are pretty dope. I need to get Fernie to Wait, let me try to focus on it. I gotta get Fernie to do those again. Cause the fingers they don't really stay. It's my favorite tattoo because I mean that's another story to tell. Um, another time I guess, but we were actually never engaged. We went from being boyfriend and girlfriend to husband and wife. And you got that tattoo before we got married. So. Well, yeah, because I knew that, like... In my mind, it's like how you proposed. Well, in my mind, it was me kind of telling you, like, this is forever. <laughs> yeah, it was sweet. Next question is, what's up with all the intros, JC? Um, it's different, to say the least. I enjoy being different and some of them are very random and have nothing to do with me um, mm -hmm. but at the same time like look if you watched a TV channel every day day in and day out and it had the same intro for a hundred episodes you probably would be over it at least this keeps it refreshing. I've, I mean, I've been told time and time again, like, I'm only here for the intros. Like, I've had customers come in and say, dude, I don't even watch your videos. I just watch your intros, <laughs> which is kind of cool and funny. Is it cool? Um, nah, it, I mean, it is and it isn't. You know what I mean? Like, the fact that you've even taken any time to pay attention to anything I'm doing, right? Like, some people... Some people will bash it, some people will knock it, say, you know, that I'm like a false prophet in the sneaker game and this, that, and the third, but you're taking time and effort, whether it's for, you know, your, like, benefit, pleasure, disliking, or whatever, I might as well make it entertaining. I owe it to you to make it entertaining. It's your time that I can't give you back. So might as well just give you something cheesy to laugh at. I watch your channel to dislike it. Cool. <laughs> um, I appreciate those that watch the channel to dislike it or to talk bad about it. Because, I mean, if you didn't have it, you wouldn't have anything to say about me. Which then, you know, you'd have to go about it. What else are you going to be miserable about, you know? Might as well be me. There's a lot worse stuff you could be miserable about. I have at least another 100 to 200 video intros. We worked hard on some of those. Who is Matt? Matt. Matt DeCourcy, good friend. Met him through a mutual acquaintance. Matt is from Kansas City. Matt is uh, a, a good friend, has become a good friend. Um, trying to convince him to move from Kansas City to Vegas because it would make life easier, I think, for both of us. But Matt helps me handle 2Js. Um, Matt, so Matt's role for 2Js is making sure that we run efficiently and Matt makes sure that I'm where I need to be outside of UN and make the appearances that I do and so for so on and so forth. Matt has also um, helped build our website, which we gave him a not a, there's a non compete in there, so don't bother hitting up Matt to build you a website because he's not gonna. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so he's helped build a website. He's helping me build an app. Uh, he's also um, helped me land a a book deal. So so Matt is my my manager. Matt Matt makes two J's efficient. 
Matt is also, well, I believe, the movie phone guy. If you're old enough to know who <laughs> the movie phone guy is, it's Matt. Every time he calls me. Yeah, Matt does have that voice. He sounds just like him. Uh, is that bait necklace made out of real gold? Yes, it is. So, the bait, the, it, it's two different pieces. It's not like the, it's a bait pendant and chain. Um, I had a store in New York Canal, on Canal Street, which I used to walk by when I was a kid all the time. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, <laughs> we'll edit that part up. No, we won't. Excuse me. Oh my God. So, the chain is real. It's 14 karat gold. It's solid gold. Um, so it weighs, it has a decent little weight to it. I got it from a store called Popular Jewelry that's on, in New York on Canal Street. When I was a kid, I used to walk by this store all the time and you know, had the twinkle in my eye, super window shopping. Went to New York last year. Uh, they were recommended to me um, f to get this work done by a friend of ours from a different shop. They made the introduction. I said, hey, I need a one of a kind piece. They knocked it out of the park. Sweet. I wanna get another one. Wink. <laughs> what shoe did you spend the most time getting without giving up? That's a great question. What do you think? Well, I think, well, I gave up on one that I like was tired of trying to get. And you know which one that is, and then you made a post and you found it in five minutes, yeah. which was infuriating, but I'm glad it worked out. Why that, was it infuriating? Because I like put in so much effort to get it and I couldn't get it on my own and I'm supposed to be the shoe guy and I couldn't get the one shoe that I wanted. Well, um, the shoe gal, we're a, we're a team. Yeah, I appreciate you having my back, player. Uh, <laughs> that shoe that I'm talking about is the Maroon Human Race, Friends and Family. Um, I tried and tried and tried. I offered crazy money in New York for that shoe and the guy, the guy just looked at me like I was nuts and said no. That was one shoe. Uh, the other shoe is uh, Kanye Air Max 180. I've wanted that shoe from the second I saw it and you know it took about 12, 13 years to get, reuni to, to get united. And then I wore it for 45 minutes and it crumbled. But, I mean there's so many, I, I could go on Independence Air Max 90, remember that? And then I let it go, and when I had to sell it, I cried because I was so butthurt, and I was, I was so upset about selling that shoe, but I, I needed to sell the shoe. I didn't have any money to even pay for another night in a hotel. It was crazy. I, I got stories for days when it comes to <laughs> acquiring shoes. Maybe another time. Okay, so tell me what's the most expensive sneaker that has come through the shop? We've had some whacked ones. Uh, well, you guys know, most expensive shoe we sold was $30,000. And that shoe sold in 30 minutes. You remember that? You know what shoe I'm talking about? Uh, you, no. Yes. Mags, auto lacing, okay. sold in 30 minutes. Now I know $30,000 is a lot of money. And most of the comments are gonna be like, $30,000, you're out of your mind. I could've bought a car, I could've bought a house. You're absolutely right, you can, you could have. But you have to have the $30,000 and people that spend that type of money are definitely in a position to be able to justify it. Now, the, it was, I call him a kid, even though he's not a kid. It's just because he's younger than me. We uh, we talked to him. He turned around and flipped that shoe for fifty six thousand dollars. So that he made twenty six thousand dollars on his thirty. Genius. Yeah, we Can't sold it for that. we we sold it for like twenty five plus on their market value. It's kind of crazy. We throw a steal or two when we can. What else you got for me, Joni? Who has better style, you or Joni? You know, uh, Joni has the Michelle Obama approach to style. She's got a, she's got a little steez to her. 
Um, I want to think that I dress okay. I've, I've always been uh, very, like, I don't want to say, like, I've been flashy, like, my whole life. So, like, being flashy has always kind of had me pay attention to style a little, a little bit. Um, I don't want to say I'm original at all, but I, I do think that I have a pretty good sense of being able to piece together an outfit. Um, I mean, it's it's hard covering this model-like figure that I have, you know, like it looks like I'm pregnant. <laughs> so to look good dressing is kind of hard, but Joni, Joni's got some steez to her. I, I don't know, it just depends on the day of the week. You know, I might look like I'm going to a, a ditty party and Joni might look like she's going to a funeral at the same time, <laughs> you know? I love black. I do help Joni from time to time get her pieces. Like, she's always happy with the coats that I buy her. I will say that. And the bags that I've picked. You know I got taste. Who do you think, who do you, who do you think has more style, you or me? Me. I would hope you're a woman. No, it's not because I'm a woman. I feel like I'm a style forecaster. I think there's a lot of stuff that I used to encourage you to, like, try before, like, years ago, that you were like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, but it was also because it wasn't in my tax bracket. Yeah, but you acted like it was whack at the time. Well, yeah, you always talk negative about stuff you can't afford. That's just a natural human trait. So I was, I'm kind of a style forecaster then. I guess if it makes you sleep better at night. I sleep good. You sleep good during the day. The, the next question. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I sleep you sleep easy. anywhere, man. Sleep easy. Um, are you going to give Joni a massage later on? I don't really think this question's on that list. The Let last me see one if wasn't I'll... even on that list. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making up questions. Probably not, fam, because there's a massage chair right there. That'll give you a solid 20 minutes, and when the 20 minutes are done, you could get another 20. My I, my hands are brittle. I'm on my phone all day. I, I'm not good at massages. I'll step on your back if you want one good time. No. I'm good. Um, what is your best dance move? Well, I've always had a pretty mean two-step. Don't talk about it. Show it. Nah, Come I'm on. not a dancer. I'm sorry. I got two. <laughs> I got two left feet. I step on toes. I, I'm not one, and I don't like going to club. I like. I get it. You've seen me in clubs with like meth and red, and stuff. But that's different because I'm there to support the homies. Um, but I I don't dance, and I don't like going to the club to keep like a, like. Keep my back on a wall and people watch like so you're more of a head bobber yeah 100 percent. i bob my head all the, all damn Show day what's your best head bob uh, i don't have a best head bob move all right well that's the end of the question all right so there we have it q a with jay for the month of april 2017 uh, um you know do me a favor make sure to you know ask questions so we could get it for you know next month for this month and ask and try to answer all the questions don't forget that you could go on jclopez.com and upload your own content keep it pg keep it copyright music free uh, you know as as you've seen now we've already sub submitted and uploaded a couple of videos which i think are great um, as always i can't thank you enough for the support and i'll catch you guys on the next video good night